Okay, so it is finally law three of Atomic Habits. I'll be honest, have you read way ahead or did you just pause with me? I paused. Okay, perfect. Okay, I am kind of in love with chapter 11 about, um, you know, it starts with the photography class and the quantity group versus the quality group. Right. That, that was fascinating. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, so for anybody who hasn't read the book, um, he broke his, his groups up into um, quantity and quality group. And um, let's see, they'd be graded solely on the amount of work they produce. The, the quantity group was graded on the amount of work they produced. On the final day of class, he would tally the number of photos submitted by each student. 100 photos would rate an A, 90 photos a B, 80 photos a C, and so on. Meanwhile, everyone on the right side of the group would be in the quality group they would be graded only on the excellence of their work. They would only need to produce one photo during the semester, but to get an A, it had to be a nearly perfect image. At the end of the term, he was surprised to find that all the best photos were produced by the quantity group. During the semester, these students were busy taking photos, experimenting with composition and lighting, testing out various methods in the darkroom and learning from their mistakes. In the process of creating hundreds of photos, they honed their skills. Meanwhile, the quality group sat around speculating about perfection. In the end, they had little to show for their efforts other than unverified theories and one mediocre, mediocre photo. Well, how about that for network marketing? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I know. Lots and fun. lots of people who spend lots and lots of money and time on trainings. And not near as much time getting rejected. Right? Yep. So, I mean, what do you think? What do you think about that? Before we dig into his ideas, I had never, even though I've read this book, listened to it twice, I don't feel like I've it's ever sunk into me the difference between motion and taking action, which we'll go into. But what do you what are your thoughts? Um well that that triggered my desire for perfection um, because I'm always thinking, I don't have time to do that right now because I don't have time to give it the time that it deserves so that I can get it right. And how I need to stop doing that and just get into action. Just, just do it, even if it's wrong, even if it's bad, just do it. Yeah. Instead of sitting around thinking about how when, to make it right. when this condition and when this condition and when this condition are met, then I can do it. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times I've heard over the past nine years that the perfect message to a person who's not ready won't land. And a disaster of a message to the person who's ready will land every time. Mm -hmm. So just bleh. <laughs> Yeah. Bleh. <laughs> yeah, you know? for sure. I've had times where I, I go live and I do the whole live and I hit, it ends and I'm like, that was awful. <laughs> that was only once though, have I deleted it because I actually said some things I shouldn't have said that shouldn't have been out to the world yet. And I deleted mm -hmm. it and I had people message me right away. That's like, where did your video go? And I was like, I shouldn't have said all of those things. Sometimes I feel like I should say all the things and I actually shouldn't. Sometimes my mm -hmm. husband's not ready for me to say all the things. <laughs> but like I've been a disaster lots of times. I think that's why I posted that picture. I don't know if you saw it the other day, the side by side of like what I looked like after all day on the island. Yeah. And what I looked like in a professional photo shoot with full glam. Like that's both me. You yeah. get it all, you know? Right. Because the majority of the people that are going to join my team probably look like the girl on the left whose hair's a mess, a little bit sunburned. Yes. My family calls it my halo. It just, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, he digs into the difference between motion in motion and taking action. And I just feel like we could spend the entire book club on this portion and it would be everything that network marketers needed. Yeah. I mean, we, uh, right. That, that line at the bottom of page 142, you know, the biggest reason why you slip into motion rather than taking action, you want to delay failure. Yes. So that's a trigger. Is, is in, in, yeah. In network marketing, it's delaying the rejection. Yes. Yes. And I don't know if you got a chance. You, you were on the call Wednesday. Mm -hmm. You just froze on me. But when Genevieve talked so much about like failure, just being an opportunity for us to pivot. Mm -hmm. Actually, that was the point where I signed on. Cause I remember okay. the first thing I heard you say was failure is feedback. So I do need to go back and watch the beginning of the recording. Cause I was, that really was the beginning of okay. her. I wasn't sure. I didn't know. Let me double check, I but I feel I like that know was what I might've missed. Yeah. I feel like literally that was my third note okay. failure is just feedback nothing more nothing less and the more feedback you get the more you can pivot and realign before that she was talking about sprinting to the goal okay it's just the beginning sprint to well, the goal that, is just the beginning and then you that failure is why you need to practice at something yes yeah because I mean, the, the failure in practice is the feedback. It's like, no, don't do it that way. Yeah. If your kid like tipped over on his bike, the first time you took the training wheels, you wouldn't be like, like okay, biking is not for you. Right. Like, let's go ahead and sell the bike. You're not very right. good at this. Like you would never do that. Right. You'd be like, let me run as fast as I can holding the seat down the street. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, you would never Here's the deal. You would never let your children quit if they failed mm -hmm. the first few times. Right. You're, you're an educator. Like, would you ever let kids in your classroom, like, you know what? You kind of suck at math. Look, you, you're not getting these right. So we, we should just stop here. Yeah. I'm just, just going to flunk you for the year. Let's just call it a day. You're not very good at this. Right. You're not going to be an engineer. <laughs> we would never. What would you do? What would you trying. make them do? If a kid wasn't good at math or reading, what would you make them do? Well, reading is easier to talk about because I'm an English teacher. Okay, so um, let's talk about it. That reading takes practice. You just have to read. Um, and maybe I, I would always encourage students to read what they enjoyed. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't need to be reading lofty texts in order to improve at reading. In fact, that that triggers frustration if you're reading something that's out of your comfort range. Mm -hmm. So just read things that you enjoy. And if you're if what you enjoy is below your grade level, that's fine, because still, just the more you read, the better you get. And don't you think a lot of it is getting in the habit of reading? Mm -hmm. like sitting down right and reading right like they'll progress right yeah so how does that relate to you and your business just do it just do, do it do what don't throw um, up on your computer just what do you no, have to I'm do not. I'm, I'm, <laughs> no winning day yeah, yeah especially the reaching out to people Reaching out to people is where I get stuck. Yeah. Because it's like, I've reached out to these same people so many times and I get crickets or I get a little bit of interest and then I get ghosted. And I just feel like everybody knows what I'm doing. If they wanted to do it, they'd have done it by now. Well, Except everybody likes to be invited. That's true. Everybody likes I did to be invited. I have one who had gone dormant on me and then in like January, she posted something about she was getting the diabetic shot 
And just Wednesday of last week, I was uh, talking to another gal that I'm working with who's who's trying to be a runner, um, but keeps stumbling. And don't we all? Uh -huh. But um, I was talking to her and just mentioned this other friend and said, I think I'm just going to have to bless and release her. Because, uh -huh. you know, she's she's got on the products multiple times and then she quits. Yeah. She messaged me on Thursday and we just re-signed her up again. Because for for reasons she has not disclosed to me, she had to stop taking the diabetic shot. Well, I have two people on my team who um, came to me when they were ready to get off the shot. One of them, after a few vacations, blah, 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 decided she was going to get another couple shots but she stayed on her triplex and she mm -hmm. said she did not have any of the side effects that she had the whole past year of being on the shots, like mm. how much it messed with her digestion and all kinds of stuff. She said, I just, she goes, I'm not going to tell people not to get the shot because it helped her lose 80 pounds. She oh goes, yeah. but everybody who's getting the shot also needs to be doing this because I can't tell you how much it messes up. And the other person, she was stopping the shots because she wanted to get pregnant, but um, her digestion, she was a mess. She just felt awful. And she goes, I have to try something to get healthy again so that I can get pregnant. And so even if people are going to get the shot mm -hmm. because they feel like it's easier, they're going to not feel good. And so don't stop sharing. Right. I just talked right. to somebody else two days ago, who was like, well, my friend like ignored my things and now is posting about getting or, or mess it. And I was like, don't give up because she's going to feel like crap. Mm -hmm. And it's helpful to know. I didn't know that. Yes. It messes with their digestion system so bad and it becomes so painful. Mm -hmm. Like, okay. and so yes, yes. Don't give up. Um, Jessica Heffley talked about, I want to address this in regards to the book, as far as like continuing to take action mm -hmm. and following up, but in relation to our business, I think it was Jessica, I may be wrong, but it was just Jessica or Brittany Howard, I think, but talked about how, um, because Jessica is, I think a six star diamond six or seven okay. star diamond so that many legs of jewels and so mm -hmm. what they did yeah just and Brittany and so what they did is they talked about each of their jewel legs and kind of how they got them kind of really I think to put away any misperception of like these are people uh, whatever whatever you think you need to create the jewel leg or to sign somebody who's going to become a jewel like throw it out because they went through all of their jewel legs and every one of them was so diverse. Brittany even has two that she only knew from cold messaging on social media had never met before. But wow. Jessica, one of her jewel legs um, is a level two. And then level one messaged her and said, stop messaging my people. You're driving them crazy. Like you don't want, like leave my people alone. But that level one wasn't doing anything. Right. It's like I'm not I don't give up on people so one of her jewel legs is a level two that after the 17th ignored message just go back and counted when the girl messaged and said okay I need to earn some money and then became a jewel but when she messaged that I need to make some money Jessica said she went back and looked she had sent her 17 messages that the girl had not responded to about working the business or about sales or whatever. And the girl had never responded 17. Wow. And now that's one of her jewel legs. Like, is that crazy? That is crazy. And so, you know, they really, it was just about like, you have to just do the thing and you have to keep putting it out there and you have to not know. You just don't know if things have changed for people. We mm -hmm. just don't know. Right. Um, so 
I just, I just love it so much for, I'm just going to read this. If you don't mind, Angie, for anybody who, because okay. we know some people watch this that haven't <laughs> read the book. And I feel like this right. is so powerful. Um, but he says, I refer to this as the difference between being in motion and taking action. The two ideas sound similar, but they're not the same. When you're in motion, you're planning and strategizing and learning. Those are all good things, but they don't produce a result. Action, on the other hand, is the type of behavior that will deliver an outcome. If I outline 20 ideas for articles I want to write, that's motion. If I actually sit down and write an article, that's action. If I search for a better diet plan and read a few books on the topic, that's motion. If I actually eat a healthy meal, that did I say that's motion. If I actually eat a healthy meal, that's action. Mm -hmm. Sometimes motion is useful, but it will never produce an outcome by itself. It doesn't matter how many times you go talk to the personal trainer, that motion will never get you in shape. Only the action of working out will get the result you're looking to achieve. If motion doesn't lead to results, why do we do it? Sometimes we do it because we actually need to plan or learn more. But more often than not, we do it because motion allows us to feel like we're making progress without running the risk of failure. Most of us are experts at avoiding criticism. It doesn't feel good to fail or to be judged publicly. So we tend to avoid situations where that might happen. And that's the biggest reason why you slip into motion rather than taking action. You want to delay failure, which is the sentence you mentioned. So stinking good. I, I Every time I read this, I'm like, how can I shorten that into a reel? How can, how can I like get this message to everybody? This message is so good. Um, so, and he says, motion makes you feel like you're getting things done, but really you're just preparing to get something done. When preparation becomes a form of procrastination, you need to change something. You don't want to merely be planning. You want to be practicing. So then we're looking at, which is the reason we're reading this book, Atomic Habits, what do we need to do? And I love that first paragraph um, after uh, the, um, how long does it actually take to form a new habit? You want to read that, Angie, that first paragraph? Sure. Habit formation is the process by which a behavior becomes progressively more automatic through repetition. The more you repeat an activity, the more structure I'm sorry, the more the structure of your brain changes to become efficient at that activity. Neuroscientists call this long-term potentiation, which refers to the strengthening of connections between neurons in the brain based on recent patterns of activity. With each repetition, cell-to-cell -cell signaling improves and the neural connections tighten. First described by neuropsychological first described by neuropsychologist Donald Hebb in 1949, this phenomenon is common, commonly known as Hebb's law. Neurons that fire together, wire together. It's not even for pretend. It's for real. Like, I, it's crazy, right? Mm -hmm. Like the brain is such a remarkable thing. And so says repeating a habit leads to clear physical changes in the brain. And so what if you changed your brain by taking little tiny steps of messaging people? And honestly, messaging people about the business, like not being shy at all about sharing the business. Going back to what you said of, You've been doing this forever. You've posted about it forever. People know what you do. They will find you. Except for how often do you post about the business? You know, people might know they can feel better, but a lot of people might think they can't afford it. Mm -hmm. Right? So dripping through your post about how good the products are, but also messaging about the opportunity of the business that might be some something people don't think about. Mm -hmm. Honestly. 
unless you're posting about the business all the time, people are not thinking about that being a business. You know, and this second, sec, what was like two weeks ago or before my cruise and I showed you guys the news article about all the debt or whatever. And then I got this one from this week and it is in October, 8.4 million people had two jobs. That's a lot of people mm -hmm. working an extra job. And speaking for myself, I would way rather my second job be working from my phone in my recliner, messaging people, than checking people out at Publix. Clocking in and out. Like, yeah. Well, and I catch myself frequently thinking, like I'll walk into a store and, oh, they're hiring. I like this store. Maybe I wouldn't mind working here. And then I think, why would you want to do that for maybe $10 an hour or invest the time in my Plexus business where the outcome is potentially so much greater? I mean, you've got to think. You'd have to work about 20 hours a week. You know, you'd work a part-time job. What if mm -hmm. you spent 20 hours messaging people and creating posts? Exactly. That's a lot of messages. How many messages do you think you could spit, send in 20 hours? And, um, and follow up. Well, and and follow up is, is the key because I've, I've had it happen in the past where I like went on a messaging blitz and then all of a sudden the follow up was more than I can handle. And I wind up dropping balls. So it it's it's a fine line to walk. But yeah, yeah, if I were to spend 20 hours a week on messaging, responding to messages and following up, I, I'd be I'd be getting places. Well, and I would dare say you could divide it into five hours of messaging because the messaging is easy. Mm -hmm. If we're being honest. Shooting mm -hmm. messages out is easy. And then if well, we yeah. spend three hours of creating posts for that whole week and getting everything, because you can pre-batch things out, right? Like, I don't like to do my hair and makeup more than once a week. Mm -hmm. But when I do it, I take pictures, right? And then 10 hours of follow-up, that's probably a great ratio. If we're just comparing it to a part-time job, Right. Everybody right. doesn't want to work 20 hours doing this, but I've done the same thing. I'm leaving Publix and I'm like, everybody here is so nice. I could work here. And then I'm like, where why would I, I want to? Yeah. Why would I do that? You know, why would I do that? But like really dedicating 20 hours a week, that would create huge momentum. Okay. How did you break that down again? Five so I hours broke it messaging. Down. So with the 20 okay. hours, 10 I broke hours it. I did five hours. Yes, reaching five out. hours messaging, 10 and hours creating content. I did three hours creating content. Oh. And then I did 12 hours of follow-up because I do feel like the fortunes in the follow-up, whether it's your current yeah. customers, your potentials, people who liked your post, sending samples out. I feel like that's all in follow-up you know I haven't done it in a long time but I still have saved in the gold diggers page if you click on featured I still have the birthday sampling system there and it tells you exactly what to do again one of those things we used to do a long time where we'd message people on their birthday and offer mm -hmm. to send them samples that's an idea you know and if this just popped into my head but if we combined the birthday sampling system along with the Saturday sampling thing, and when we got somebody their samples and we said, hey, message us when you get your, your birthday samples that they agreed to, and then you throw them in that Saturday's, say, hey, hold on to them till Saturday. We have a group mm -hmm. with, that might be really fun. I'm going to write that down so I don't forget. Angie, let's, what do you think about that? I like that. Because it gives you a reason to follow up after you've sent them the birthday sam samples. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, of same course, more uh, than anybody could so be in the birthday think? thing, but. I mean, anybody could be in the sampling Saturday, but having all the birthday people and hold, please. Oh. I'm scrolling. Um, okay, here's who is your upline? Laura. Okay, so you qualify for this. I have somebody in our upline sending me bags of slim and active. And here is what, here, here was the deal I made with her. I'm going to start the, and this goes along. Cause if you're on watching our book club, you're probably on our Plexus team somewhere. <laughs> so either do this yourself if you're not on our team or if you're on our team, let's do this as our action. I love this action step. Okay, so I'm going to be receiving slim and active. I am going to um, start the sampling Saturday and the birthday thing. I love the idea of putting that together. Let's say you reach out to somebody and Susie Jones says, yes, I'll try. I would love a sample or I thank you for sending me your favorite drink things on my birthday. So then you're going to send me her address. I have all the packaging. And then all you have to pay is the shipping. So I'll ship it out. I'm gonna, our upline is going to provide the product. I'm going to provide the packaging. And then whoever um, comes on and says, hey, send samples to Susie, then I'll do my discounted PayPal shipping thing. And then you just pay like the $3. Okay. Because I feel like lots of people, especially newer people or people at lower ranks, it would be hard for them to push that knowing they have to buy extra product. Right. Buy shipping things, go to the post office. And so I've, I've kind of just pulled our upline in yesterday and said, this is what I want to do. Are you on board? So how does that feel to you? Does that feel like something worth taking yes. action on? Yes. Doesn't that sound great? I, I like that. Okay. I, I'm I'm frequently bad at getting things mailed out right away. I think many people are. I think many people are. And I think if it was just something that was on my. Mm -hmm. It was already on it. your radar. Yeah. Part of your routine. Yeah, I'm already printing labels today. Because I just have the shipping labels here. And I do everything from here. Because nobody wants to go stand in line at the post office. Right. right. So. I think that that is a great, I'm really excited about that. It's been a long time. I feel like since we as a team did mm -hmm. sampling pushes. Yes. And everybody feels better with slim and active. Mm -hmm. We People who've drank it forever, we don't notice, but people who've never had it are like, this is amazing. I got everything done on this Saturday, which is normally my busiest, craziest day. Right. Okay, I squirreled. Um, is there, what do, let's see. Let's see. In, on the habit line, um, all habits follow a similar trajectory from effortful practice to automatic behavior, a process known as automaticity. I, I feel like he made that word up. Automaticity, <laughs> is that a real word? Yes, it's a word. Lord. Automaticity is the ability to perform a behavior without thinking about each step, which occurs when the non-conscious mind takes over. And that really is, you know, mm -hmm. just as the way that it is. You just, it gets easier and easier. I feel like anybody who's had a great exercise habit or a great walking habit has experienced that. Mm -hmm. This gets easier and e easier. Um, well, yeah, over at the top of page 147, there's a, a sentence, you need to string together enough successful attempts until the behavior is firmly embedded in your mind. And then you cross the habit line. Yeah. I love it. And he, you know, and he, 
One of the most common questions I hear is, how long does it take to build a new habit? But what people really should be asking is, how many does it yeah. take to form a habit? Right? Like, right. that. that's true in running a marathon. I've run a few. Mm -hmm. And if I only went out every day and only did a mile, I would really struggle to finish 26 miles on race day. But every time I had to go a little bit further. You know, and I think that's the same. Like you might only be comfortable reaching out to three people today, but what if tomorrow you did four? Right. And what if, you know what I'm saying? Like one at mm -hmm. a time, I feel like doesn't feel overwhelming. Right. Um, okay. Anything else on that chapter? No, nope, those were the things that I picked out. Like under the chapter summary, the one thing I highlighted was the most effective form of learning is practice, not planning. Yeah. I love it. It's true. The law of least effort, uh, chapter 12. Um, he gives the whole growing. I'm trying to see, did you highlight anything that is really good? Uh, let's see. Uh, he talks about the gardening and the climate and the, um, How to achieve more with less effort. I feel like here's where I would go with that for us. For me, it looks like if I have a cell. To me, it looks like creating a voice memo and then sending it out. One voice memo and then sending it out to 50 people. Mm -hmm. If it's something that can be a generic thing. That does not take very much effort. Right. At all. Um, some people do really need, you know, more personalized messages, but to th think that, and I think that works better than a copy and paste message because they hear your voice and anytime mm -hmm. somebody hears your voice, it feels very personal to them. Mm -hmm. Like you did that just for them. I agree. Right. And so I think that's a way for less effort. And that's why I was saying, like, when you divide out your time, reaching out is the easiest to me. Like if I have something big, I'm pushing out, I can get a hundred messages out. It takes me longer to write their names down of who I'm sending them to than it does to send the messages. Right. Right. Keeping track is harder for me, <laughs> takes more time than the actual sending of messages. Yeah, sometimes um, you can get on such a roll with sending the messages that Facebook starts to give you kickback and saying, you're sending too many too fast. Yes. I've had that happen. Yeah. And if you're sending voice memos, it'll only let you send like five or six and then it makes you start over. That's okay. Because you hit the forward and it'll let you do, I don't know exactly how many, and then it won't let you forward anymore. And then you just come out and go right back in. Ah, uh, okay. Super easy. Um, I guess a couple of things that I highlighted on page 151, just because they resonated with me and it was like giving myself permission to stop beating myself up. It says our real motivation is to be lazy and to do what is convenient. And that for me, it clicked back to a lot of what I've heard from Emily Gibson about your body trying to keep you safe and your body trying to keep you alive and yeah. conserve energy um, because then in the next paragraph, he says here, energy is precious and the brain is wired to conserve it whenever possible. It is human nature to follow the law of least effort. Cause I just, I beat myself up for being lazy, but it's my human nature. And I just You're need really to learn how to human. make that work for me. Yeah. You're really just human. Yeah. I mean, but there I go being human again. I know, right? I mean, we would all rather not work. Mm -hmm. Like if I was independently wealthy and some kind of heiress, I would not be mad about it. Right. Like, I'm not one of those people who are like, my work gives me value. I, I No, I would way rather win the lottery. Mm -hmm. Like I love my work. If I have to work 
this is one gazillion percent what I want to do. Don't get me wrong. But I would not be upset if I won the lottery. Right. And would I keep working? I don't know. I mean, a little, but you know what I wouldn't do? Stress about work. Stress about where my points are. Right. Stress it. You know what I'm saying? And when you remove mm -hmm. that stress, it becomes so fun. You know, it really does. Life becomes so fun when you're not stressed about money. Um, That's my goal. <laughs> yes. That's my goal. And helping other people reach that goal. Because yes. if you help other people reach that, you're going to. Mm -hmm. You know, and that it's, I know you've heard this at every convention, but the two things we help with are health and wealth. And those are the two things that keep people up at night, you know? So maybe yep. share more of the wealth side because things are getting crazy out there. Um, okay. So yeah, this, this was the part where I don't know if you saw it. I don't know. I think it's been about two weeks ago. I posted in our chat for the book club about how I figured out why I gravitate to the kitchen. Yes. It's because there's less friction. Yeah. And of course, here I am back in the kitchen, although we have our nice new office set up, yeah. but it's, it's a process. Yeah. I well, am still trying to retrain myself to work from the office. Like when I come back from a tutoring job, I walk down the hall and put my bag away with my computer down there instead of putting it on one of the bar stools in the kitchen. And that's just one of those tiny, tiny steps. Right. Right. A tiny yeah, one habit. Of those atomic changes. Yes. It's a tiny habit that will lead to that. Right. And it's 100% accurate. When my desk is a mess, I I can't. I'm just like, I, I, I can't. I can't do stuff everywhere, even though I, there's a lot of. But it's in this thing. These are all things I need to get done. Mm. <laughs> but it I went isn't and a, myself a tray. See, that, that's amazing. That's Here's amazing. At the top of the tray. Oh, I'm gonna keep you on task because I have to do. Did I don't know if I posted this or not, but I went to check Andrew in, and his passport was expired. I think you did. <laughs> Who knew kids' passports expired sooner than their parents? It's every five years for kids ah. instead of 10. So this is sitting on my desk so that I get him a new one in case I decide to take him to Punta Cana. But um, I do like that small action of taking your bag there. Mm -hmm. I think that's really big. Um, and that's right there. His second bullet in the summary, create an environment where doing the right thing is as easy as possible mm -hmm. because you know, what is not in your office dishes, right? Laundry, laundry, like there's none of that is in like, I get so much done when I close my office door, when it is closed, mm -hmm. And I buckle in, I can look up and so much, like I've gotten so much done. It's just as is. I mean, we're not, not hard workers and we know what to do, but again, I would 500 million times rather fold laundry and make my bed than follow up with people. When right. I make my bed, it looks good. Look, I win. I'm a winner. <laughs> so um reducing yep. the friction when friction is low habits are easy um and prime your environment to make future actions easier you know so on my desk up here i have little post-its one says i'm a gold making machine trying to help people go gold one says you're capable of more than you are doing. And then one says 2015, which is where I want my points to be in December, at the end of December. Um, 
And so it's like a reminder, just a little, just a little reminder. I'm, I'm writing that one down. You're capable of more than you are doing. That, that hits hard to me. <laughs> I'm 100% capable of more than I'm doing. Like, am I getting my butt kicked with homeschool? For sure. But I could still work more. I could. So. See, and if you were closer, I could help you with the homeschool thing. I know, but you should sell Plexus instead. But teaching my kid would be way more comfortable for you. Yeah. Right? Well, and that's what my tutoring gigs consist of is it's mostly, well, right now I just have one student, she's doing a hybrid school where two days she's on campus and two days she's at home. Okay. And I'm helping her navigate the home stuff because she's a little bit flighty. I may just hire you anyway to help Andrew with grammar online. It's killing us. It's killing us. And I, we can talk about that offline because it's a yeah. disaster. Okay. How to stop procrastinating by using the two minute rule. This, how I relate it. So what, what he really talks about is like when something's brand new, just commit to like the most basic thing or commit mm -hmm. to two minutes. It cracked me up where he talked about the one guy who was overweight, who wanted to start going to the gym, who would just go for five minutes and then leave. And he five minutes and leave. And then finally he was like, well, I'm here. I might as well stay a little longer, you know, or the pe person who wants to become a runner, you know, and first step is like, just put your running shoes on. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to take any step, like baby, baby things, those little tiny habits. Um, and the two minute rule, I could... If I didn't count the creation of the message, I could probably send 15 to 20 messages in two minutes. Mm -hmm. For sure. Mm -hmm. And what if we were only like, okay, I'm going to reach out for two minutes and then I'm going to go make my bed. We could probably get so, so much done. Mm -hmm. You know, because you know, it's not hard. It is not hard to make a list of people that you're interested in reaching out to. It only becomes anxiety filled when you think about what am I gonna say to them? So what if you separated it into a list making thing and then you went away mm -hmm. and then a message creation and then you went away and then a five, four, three, two, one, start sending the messages. What if those were the tiny habits that you did? Yeah, that, that would probably be effective. I feel like because you're not giving yourself time to be overwhelmed. Right. Or scared. Every time, like if you start to get fearful while you're making the list of people, you're stopping in its tracks by getting up and taking a break to do something you're comfortable with. And then come back. I'm writing that down. Okay. Okay. So he talks about researchers estimate that 40 to 50% of our actions on any given day are done out of habit. This is already a substantial percentage, but the true influence of your habits is even greater than these numbers suggest. Habits are automatic choices that influence the conscious decisions that follow. Yes, a habit can be completed in just a few seconds, but it can also shape the actions that you take for minutes or hours afterwards. Habits are like the entrance ramp to the highway. They lead you down a path. Before you know it, you're speeding towards the next behavior. That really is true, right? Like if you sat down and you're like, I'm going to send 10 messages in two minutes. What happens when you get a good reply back? Now you're good, right? You get that like, oh, that must have been a good message. And you're replying and you're chatting. 
And now, could you sit there for an hour messaging with somebody having good back and forth? One right. million percent. Yes. yes. But it just took that two minutes of sending messages. Well, and the key is to finish the time block of sending the messages before clicking over to respond to that one who responded to you. Yeah, I never reply to anybody until I have sent all my messages out. They can wait a minute. Mm -hmm. I don't want to also seem too eager, like I'm sitting there waiting on them to right. reply. Because exactly. it is more comfortable to click over and start having a chit chat with somebody. That is more comfortable. Right. But I never stop. If I have a list of everybody, like if I'm sending out something to current customers or people that are at zero PV or something, I don't ever look at a single response until I have checked every person off. That's just a habit of mm -hmm. mine because it's so easy to get sidetracked. Yeah. And honestly, before I know it, then my kid wants lunch. Right. And so now I haven't finished my list and now it's tomorrow and I know myself. So I, I have to not reply. Um, anything stand but I, out to I liked that analogy where he said habits are like the entrance ramp to a highway. It's just a little piece of it that's habit that gets you moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Like the person who said they get up in the morning, they put on their exercise clothes and they get into a cab. That's the ritual part of the habit. Right. The result is they go work out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it really is. Every morning when I'm changing from my pajamas to my comfy clothes, <laughs> I, like, in my mind, I'm like, I could just put on my sweatpants, except for I don't work out on my sweatpants. I work out in my leggings, right? Mm -hmm. And so I put on my leggings because just the compression of my leggings reminds me, hey, you need to go work out. And I don't take them off until I've moved my body mm -hmm. at some level. And that just is a trick in my head. My leggings don't make me work out. They're just a constant reminder of, you should actually go at least take a walk, you know, mm -hmm. that that's my reminder. Um, at the right before the uh, decisive moments graph, he says, Every day, there are a handful of moments that deliver an outsized impact. I refer to these choices as decisive moments. The moment you decide between ordering takeout or cooking dinner. The moment you choose between driving your car or riding your bike. The moment you decide between starting your homework or grabbing a video game controller. These choices are a fork in the road. One gazillion percent. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we decide takeout, I have immediately increased my caloric intake by like 2000 calories every time. Yep. Like, yep. I don't know why I can't order a small French fry. Why do I need a large French fry? I don't know. I think I need, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know, because it only costs a little bit more for yes. so much more that you get. I know I get it. I, I've been there. Yes. Why do I, I have the small fry? I'm not satisfied when I'm done. I want more. Why do I have to order so much food from Chinese takeout? It's horrible for me, but I'm eating white rice. Also, there's lots of health people who would tell me that was really bad for me, but it's not the fried mm -hmm. rice. Like, <laughs> who am I? But if I had something at home, it would yep. be so much better for me. Tiny, tiny yep. choices. Um. Let's see. Yeah, at the end of that section before the heading where it says the two minute rule, um, habits are the entry point, not the end point. They are the cab, not the gym. I love that. I love that.
you know, and then the next one where like, it's easy to start too big. And mm -hmm. that applies to everything. Like people go to the gym and they haven't been in six months or a year and they want to jump back into what they're doing. And then they feel like they ache for four days. So instead of doing like a little bit and then a little bit next day and a little bit the next day and feeling good, you know, and I think that, that can happen in our business, you know, like, yes. yes, you know, sometimes you work six hours in a day because it's the end of the month. And then what do you do? Take the you next day the off. first week of the month. Right. I can't tell you how many of my team members, when everybody was working hard, everybody would take the first week off. And I'm like, what are you doing? Well, we worked so hard on the last day. And I was like, it's like working overtime at your job. You still got to go to work the next day. But also, if you had worked really consistently for the first 30 days, the day 31 is kind of a breeze of wrapping things up. And there might be a hustle. If you're like super close to a huge goal, you're going to hustle, mm -hmm. right? But if it really, if your goal really is to sign three people in the month, help somebody go silver, and you've been doing that for four weeks, the last day of the month should not destroy you. It should just be, yes, yeah. I'm working more because I'm helping other people reach goals and we got this big sale, but it should not make you so tired that you can't work for the next five days. Right. You know, again, there are exceptions. If you are 150 points away from Emerald on the 31st of the month, you should. Pull out all the stops. Yeah. Yes. You should call every human that you know and get 150 points because you're too freaking close. Like, <laughs> um, but he does those little examples like read before bed each night becomes read one page. Mm -hmm. Do 30 minutes of yoga becomes take out my yoga mat. Um, I don't know if my family would ever have clothes if fold the laundry became fold one pair of socks. That might be a problem, but um, and then he gives that that graph of like very easy, easy, moderate, hard, very hard. So very easy. Put on your running shoes. Easy. Walk 10 minutes. Moderate. Walk 10,000 steps. Hard. Run a 5K. Very hard. Run a marathon. And that really, I feel like, can be applied to everything and also goes kind of in line with Genevieve talking about the 90 day cycle of like sprint run, walk, sprint, run, walk, so that you are giving yourself a break, but you're never not, not running. You're mm -hmm. never not doing something. In action. Yes. Staying in action. And there's a time to learn. There's a, you know, like right now I'm trying to learn a lot about chat GPT. So do I need to spend some time learning? Yes. Should we read personal development of some sort every day or a podcast? Yes. Because that I feel like is part of the lifting up and the growing, which is required to keep taking great action. Like right. it doesn't mean don't learn anything, but it does mean you're probably going to learn more by soaking something in. And then like, if you, something That's really fine. inspires you in a podcast, then take that, be like, Oh, that feels amazing. And go to work because people will hear, hear the, hear the energy in your voice. If you're sending voice memos, they 100% mm -hmm. will. All right, we're running out of time, Angie. What else you got? Yep. Um, the point is to master the habit of showing up. I the truth that. is the habit must be established before it can be approved, improved. I really am a better reader than what I have demonstrated today. I just want to say that. I think um, instead of trying to engineer a perfect habit from the start, do the easy thing on a more consistent basis like putting my bag away down the hall instead of in the kitchen. Yeah. Yep. Because that means I have to walk down there to get my laptop if I decide I want it in the kitchen. Yeah. And then or you have I to decide, just, hey, I could yeah. just stay here. Yeah. You know, but you've made a step. Um, but also, then on 165 in the middle, he says, strategies like this work for another reason too. They reinforce the identity you want to build from earlier in the book, thinking about the person you want to be and that every time you do the right thing, it's casting a vote for the person you want to be. 
That's so good. That's so good. I feel like that was so long ago, but if we had read consistently, that would have just only been two weeks separate. But I really love that reminder. And further down the page, it's better to do less than you hoped than to do nothing at all. Although sometimes I let myself off the hook that way. It's like, well, but you did something. Well, remember, part of the winning day is to take two complete days off. And you will never feel guilty about that if you did the winning day for five days. Right. You, that only feels yucky when you haven't done it. Yeah. But if you haven't done it, that means you took that day off. Like I like to take Saturday and Sunday off, but Monday I did nothing. Monday I did some, well, I traveled, but I messaged and did lots of things. And But Tuesday I didn't do hardly anything. That probably should count as my day off, which means I probably have to work tomorrow because I'm going to take Sunday off, right? So like holding yourself accountable. Right. Um. Let's see if there's anything in the summary of the of chapter 14 that we need to. Because he tells the story of Victor Hugo locking himself, like making his people take his clothes away <laughs> so that he couldn't go out <laughs> having fun until he finished his book. That's kind of genius. Yeah. Um, see, and I'd be in heaven if I didn't have to leave the house. Rob sent me a, a calendar invite to go meet up with his best friend and and uh, his wife for tomorrow evening. And I replied back, no, thank you. And he was like, no, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. No, thank you. I'm good. Um, when you autumn, right after the bullet points of like medicine, personal finance, cooking, I don't know what page because I'm on my Kindle, but he says, when you automate as much of your life as possible, you can spend your effort on the task tasks machines cannot do yet. How I apply that to us is batch creating of your content. Mm -hmm. Because you can now remember Facebook, there used to be all the apps where we would like preload stuff, but Facebook would right. block it. But now Facebook lets you schedule things. There's, really? Yes. I, even on your personal timeline, I know you can schedule things in groups. I know you can in your groups, but that also is very handy. Or you know what else you could do? What? I just thought of this. You could batch create your stuff. And then what if in your calendar on your phone, like when you want to post to go up at like eight, you have saved the content, your caption and the picture in the notes section of that eight o'clock time. And you're going to get a reminder, post, and your post is already created. And then you just copy paste and throw it up. That wouldn't be hard. I feel like that's about as close to automation as possible because you're not having to think. Mm -hmm. And it's reminding you, hey, make your morning post, make your afternoon post, make your evening post, and you already have it done. That's an idea. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. That's, that's it may not be for idea. everybody, but you know, I heard an idea on a chat GPT training yesterday that I really liked. And he said, if you have posts or things on Instagram that have done well, take the caption and drop it in chat GPT and ask it to rewrite it for you with more, make it funnier, make it more fun. So it's different words, but it's the same message and then just reuse it. Wow. Mind blown. Yeah. Like you don't have to keep recreating things. So like if Plexus, you know, in the shareables, it'll have like descriptions of stuff that you could share, but it sounds very corporate-y. What if you took those and you threw them in chat GPT and made this say, so make this sound like a 50 year old Southern woman. It will spin it and spit it back out different. So now it doesn't sound corporate. Mm -hmm. Just ideas of simplifying things when you're batch creating. Just a thought. That was amazing. Just a thought. I love when I have thoughts. <laughs> okay, chapter summary so that we end it out. Um, the 
ultimate way to lock in future behavior is to automate your habits. Um, One-time choices, like buying a better mattress or enrolling in an automatic savings plan, are single actions that automate your future habits and deliver increasing returns over time. That could be batch creating your concept. Mm -hmm. You know, that could be... Um, that could be sitting down and making a list of 50 people knowing that you're going to message 10 a day because 10 a day makes the follow-up doable, right? Right. So a one-time choice of, Hey, I'm going to write down 50 names on Monday morning and I will message 10 a day, Monday through Friday, one-time choice that's going to have increasing returns all throughout the week. Right. All right. What do you want to say in closing, Angie? Um, I don't know. Just this was a really good section, um, in my opinion, this particular law and reading these things. I it agree. was a lot. Yeah. It was really good. Really, really I mean, the good. whole book is good, but this just, there was a lot here that really hit home for me. I agree. And very um, transferable to what we do. Yes. Yes. Very right. much. Some um, of the other stuff is, is more, just more on a personal level than a business level. But I think this really we could, is, is yes. very relatable. Yeah. I agree with you. This was really awesome. All right, sister. That was a lot. Yeah. Yeah. But it I was. feel like it was really good. Like I yeah. really, I came away from this call with you, like with so many good ideas, I feel like. Got a to-do list now, huh? I do. I've got my um, birthday sampling system and then I'm going to do some chat GPT. I'm doing a summary for anybody watching this call. Chat GPT with corporate messaging to make it more sound like me because I feel like that's good when it comes to product stuff. And then what else did we say we're going to do? We're going to make a list of 50 people on Monday. Yes. And then message 10 a message day. Message 10 a day. And what else? Did you write down any other to do? Um. Well, the thing that I jotted down was the idea about make the list and then go away and do something, create the message and then go away and do something and then come back and send the messages. I love that. Okay. Like there was something else. And I just made a note to myself that I need to start batch creating content. I, I did start trying to keep like a calendar because I'll have two or three post ideas based on something I'll see somebody else post. Yeah. Like, oh, I want to use that. And, oh, I want to use that. So I started jotting them down on a calendar. So I didn't like all of a sudden have three Plexus posts in one day because obviously I don't want to do that. I do so, it sometimes. So here's another thing. If like, let's say Sarah Marble made a great post that you saved and liked, maybe take that caption and throw it in chat GPT so it spins it. And so you're not taking something specifically, mm -hmm. you know, because, and you may not love what it says, but you could say, this is a little boring. Make it funnier. Mm -hmm. This, rewrite this to, um, to sound like a 45 year old woman, like whatever, whoever you're trying to attract, but taking other people's things. And, and then if you do it on ChatGPT, then you just copy and paste it into your calendar. You don't even have to, you're not even writing, typing anything. You're just copy, paste, and it's there. And then if you batch pictures, mm -hmm. I have known to, when my hair and makeup is done, change clothes multiple times from here mm -hmm. up. Because you guys see me on video twice a week. You know, like, this is really... Like there's, I am not glamorous very often. So 
Yeah, I've gotten in the habit of barely ever wearing makeup. Whereas when I was teaching and up until COVID, I was like makeup every day, makeup every day. And now I'm doing good if I put on mascara to go out. Yes, my big thing is mascara and lipstick because my lips are white, but you guys never even get mascara. You only get mascara if I've done something before I've done the color. (laughs) So just thinking those things, because although it may take a minute today, it's going to save, you know, Mm -hmm. my pictures that I post with my things very rarely were taken that day, you know, very rarely. Right. So I just have such a hard time taking good selfies. Do you have a tripod? One for my SLR camera. Because for like $15 on Amazon, I don't even have this the light plugged in ever. I just uh-huh. do this. And then I take pictures of myself wherever I want. Or videos. Like if you see me walking in my yard for a reel. It's this. Uh huh. And I just do this and it leans against the wall in my office all the time. So when my hair and makeup's done, this is not even an inconvenience, except for that it leans against the wall all the time, which could be considered tacky, except for if I had to pull it out and do the legs every time, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. See, you're reducing the friction. Yes. It literally leans right there. And in all honesty, my when my office door is open, you can't see it. It's only mm-hmm. when my door is closed that I can see it leaning there. Gotcha. So get you one of those. And then just have fun with it. Do you like set the timer on your the the shutter timer on your cam on your phone? Okay. Or you can also do you have a Apple Watch? Well, mine's a Samsung, but yes, it'll fire my camera. And that does it always on mine with a three second delay. So I can do this and then pose. Gotcha. Same for videos. Nice. Because, yeah, I feel like I don't have any help to get decent pictures. Um, Did you see the pictures Andrew took of me on the cruise? They weren't that bad. (laughs) But, okay, so, yeah, he's he's right there with my husband in terms of photography. Oh, my Not, husband is yeah. worse because he likes to take ones that make me look ridiculous. Like they're always like, I'm like, why can't you just, and for how many ever months, like my shoulder hasn't worked. Like Natalie wanted to take a, me to take the selfie of the group on the ship. And I was like, my arm doesn't go that far yet. So you're going to have to take it because my left arm is like wobbly and my right arm just doesn't extend that far yet. Mm-hmm. So, no, that tripod, I just carry it around the house. Like if I'm doing something in the kitchen, whatever. It's a great way to get videos too, like of just random mm-hmm. things. So just a gotcha. thought. Not that I have not taken 4,000 selfies. That That's, yes, I do. But that makes it more fun. And makes it look like I have a good photographer. I don't. We'll have to look into that. They're super cheap. It's cheap. It's flimsy. It's probably my fourth one. So, but, but I mean, it's all you need. Yeah. All All right. right. I will look into that. Have a great weekend. And if you haven't worked all five days, go ahead and make your list. And send 10 messages today. I haven't worked any days. All right. Well, you could just make a plan and then start on Monday or you could do some things today. Yeah. Whatever feels better. Or you could just batch create because batch creating is fun. Coming up with content is fun and no pressure. And you could get, you could do all that today so that next week you're clear to just message and follow up. Just some ideas. All right. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. All right. Thanks, Christy. Bye. Bye.